And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Gangplank's Fate for our Rank Up Sunday. As y'all know, this was one of the decks we played in the seasonal tournament a week ago. And um, we played it one other time since then. And I didn't do the best that second time we played it, but I think I, I made some uh, incorrect decisions. You know, so one of those times I didn't play the best. But I'm, I'm bringing it back for Rank Up Sunday because I'm pretty confident in it. I think this is a, a good, solid deck. We're going to have our Twisted Fate. We're going to have our Gangplank. Our champions are awesome. We're going to be aggressive, kind of like Pirate Burn, but we're going a little bit bigger. We're going to have the Ravenous Flock Arachnoid Sentry combo in here and uh, then also have some extra card advantage with Salvage getting to the top end with Captain Farron, who just wins games. So let's go ahead and just kind of get to our games. Not too much to say about it. Just a um, bunch of good cards together. So here we go. Gangplank's Fate. That's a cool name for a deck, too. Gangplank's Fate. All right, there we go. <laughs> okay. Zed Shivana. We played against Zed Shivana just a little bit ago. We're going to get rid of the Salvage. I may get rid of the Sprayfin also, so... Uh, yeah, let's just Mulligan Sprayfin also. Let's see if we get a one-drop. Because we have the attack token on turn one. Well, we did get the one drop, but unfortunately we got the Sprayfin and Salvage back, so I guess that's going to work like that. Okay, but as far as... Okay, so how how do you get into tourneys and how do they work? Um, I There's... So... 1,000 and... Ooh, maybe I play the Demolitionist. No, I'm going to save Demolitionist. The top 1,024 players get qualified for the, the tournament, and there's two different ways. You can be in the top 700 players in Masters rank at the end of a season. The seasons usually la last for like two months. So at the end of at the end of the season, if you're in the top um, top 700 in Masters rank, you get there. Or the top 324 players in the Gauntlets, if you play the Gauntlets on the weekends and do well in the gauntlets. You can qualify that way also. I believe that there's a tournament tab. Um, like whenever you hit play, you know, you play uh, like the different ways to play, you know, like um, uh, like ranked or expeditions or gauntlets, things like that. Like there should be one that says tournaments. And if you go to that tab on the screen, there should be information about that. That's a big protege. Let's play Sprayfin. Keep up, keep up. You this yeah, I think the gauntlets are only on the weekends. Kind of like a Friday Night Magic type thing. Yep. And it's it's like it's like throughout the whole weekend. Like they open up on like Fridays and close on Mondays kind of thing. So 11, and I got 6 here. The Grenadier is another 2, so like 7. I, I wanted to attack, instead of playing stuff before combat, I just felt like they were going to play like a big dragon, right? Like a Shivana or a Screeching Dragon, you know, something like that. So I wanted to get the damage in first. Also, Spirit Animal, being a newer newer player, I have this link here for just uh, Reddit Reddit thing for new players for Runeterra. So maybe you can find some, maybe there's some stuff, info there that also kind of helps you out. And we're always here to answer any kind of questions you got. Ooh. Okay, so Gangplank's at four out of, or three out of five. I could play the Death's Hand to make it four. Oh, but I can't go Death's Hand and Gangplank. Both. Don't got the mana for that. Considering playing Gangplank, letting them Screeching Dragon kill my Gangplank, but then I can Death's Hand and kill the Screeching Dragon afterwards. It's a good two turns for them with the Screeching Dragon and then Stony Suppressor Shivana. Good two turns for them. Yeah, maybe not. Break them. Death doesn't stop. 
scare me. Okay, we got leveled up Gangplank. I am reborn of salt and dry. The Fourier with the Twitch Prime sub. Y'all get some hype in the chat for our new sub. All right, let's keep getting some more attackers out here. So what are they hold like why aren't they playing anything? What are they holding on to? I'm not So I'm not sure about. Like what what are they holding on to right now? That was the best card for me to hit. Like is it just It's just got to be judgment, right? It's got to be judgment. Yeah, 9 mana judgment. I feel like it's gotta that's what it's gotta be. So I'll just pass the turn. I'm at twenty. We can look for some more damage. No I know they can like challenge and kill the gangplank, but even if if I just attack with gangplank, that gives them the opportunity that gives them the opportunity to be like, okay, well now I don't I can just block with my screeching dragon, I can th then play my Scythria and other stuff post combat, right? Like it just it gives them the out of spending their mana, or even if they just they could just judgment and kill my gangplank if they want, um, you know, like that. So it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to attack. It's either attack with more things or not like that. That's not a good just um, just gangplank attack. And of course, uh, waiting, I do get this powder keg. We'll see what the powder keg does for us. Saves us seven life. Not a bad powder keg. Death sand. Darn. What's up, Captain Farron? How you doing? Dang. We got some options here. So now how I lose is... So we know about the Judgment. And so now the thing is, do they have Rangers Resolve also? Right, because then with Judgment it would cost 9 mana. So they'd have another two mana. Because basically I can I can respond to the judgment with Ravenous Flock on like one of these, right? So I can I can like go gangplank and get a powder cake. So that's that's what I have to be worried about is both of those together. But I think this is my best option, if that's gonna be what happens. I can I mean I guess I could just attack here. I could Hmm. Let's, get to Let's throw out those also. You. You can go too. Yeah, so please don't have... <clears throat> please don't have Ranger's Resolve. No Rangers Resolve. All right, good. GG's. 
Oh, big overwhelm. Overwhelm's always tough. This is a good underrated deck. New hand. Slow. Oh, we do have the sentry flock combo. I can put in some work. Coming in, hot. Coming in cold. I guess I just pass. I have the best job. Good. That's exactly what I was hoping was going to happen. Don't mess. Still just a one for one trade. I have my but it's a good one for one trade for sure for us. It's time. Okay, so now basically deciding between red kills the 2 1, gold stops the Draven from attacking, but they still get to attack with the 2 1. I guess it's red. Red or gold. Red. Never lost a fair game or played one. Who says I don't share? And now next turn, I'm going to be playing Grenadier and Ballista and then attacking. And so putting a good amount of pressure on them. Ooh. I could triple spell. I could play both of these now instead of just the Ballista. That's actually probably better. For the Empire. That's too bad they had their own Ballista that had three health rikes. Now I don't get to attack with these things. That's too bad. Wish they had just, you know, something smaller that had two health. Yeah, I mean, we could we could just send them both in also and just have one of them die and get another two points in. This is gonna hurt for you. So Draven's the thing that does not have Overwhelm. Looks like they're keeping the Overwhelm. Does that mean Decisive Maneuver coming in my future? Twisted Fate's only at like two. Yeah, it's at two. I, mean, I guess they're gonna be playing troll chant, so it doesn't it doesn't make sense to block as a troll chant. They're gonna need like troll chant or cooling strike, something like that, to stay alive. Right, because like we we have a lethal attack here. Um, I really want a spell. That's not a spell, but that's not bad. Let's see what we get here. No, Death Hand, that's what I want. Okay, play more things before attacking or attacking. I think I play this. Yeah. Funny the hand lap they don't. They don't play avalanche. Sharp tongue you've got there, River Snake. For My yep, definitely worth playing. Noxus. So they have to have troll chance to stay alive. Um, but if they, do they still stay alive with the powder keg now? I think they still do. I think they do. Cause they're at five. Go block, block here. Yeah, they go to one. Ugh, please don't have troll chant. Don't have it. Don't have it. The card they just drew. Oh. 
Yep, that was the the one card that kept them alive. So. Their block was. Oh right, that that thing stays alive now. Yeah. So I I have to top deck Death Sand now, and we already burned Death Sand. Yeah, that was that was the one card that saved them. Playing the Gangplank was definitely worth it, but would it? You know, playing basically playing a threat out was basically worth it. Would have been better to play the two things. I don't know. It looks like it looks like I, I wish I would have I would have attacked with the the two two power things. I think the top deck troll chant. GGS. That was a good game though. You know, very good game. Both we both had really good hands, and it was super close, and they got me. It's basically yeah. I, I guess so. The, the Death's Hand, I, I like the first three cards. The Death's Hand, I'm not sure about. Um. We were peaceful once. Hmm. It's our time. Nothing but the stink of blood and sweat. Difficult decision if I wanted to wait and death sand, you know, like a blocker and then make a 3 3 butcher. Or, you know, just just play it and fortune croaker it. No. Ugh. And they just trade with a 2 1. Yuck. I should have waited. That's this is this is the reason why like a 3 3 is really important, but then again they are an Aphelios deck that makes the uh, three damage moon weapon. So like just being waiting and then them making a three damage moon weapon isn't ideal. Oh, guiding touch. I need to I need to play this before, man. I. This, they better not have guiding touch. Okay, so that that card wouldn't matter either way. So that one's fine. Temple. And that's okay. So I I should play this ravenous flock over here because they know that this this card that I drew is a spell that cost three or less mana. So that's where I should play the ravenous flock. So that they um so they don't don't have any so like they still have the information that they know that I have a, a spell that costs three or less in hand. And so I I don't need to have them have that information if I would have played the other ravenous flock. Now, I would like to play the Gangplank this turn, but playing the Gangplank does mean they get to destroy my Powder Keg. Um, so that's kind of sad. Alternatively, I could play Twisted Fate and Blue Card. I know I could... Yeah. So I'll, I'll just do that. I'm always up for a round or two. Hey, Killer Rod. Yep, I used to. Um, but, you know, Gangplank getting a Powder Keg in play and then Red Carding with the Twisted Fate. Always a lot of fun. Let's draw some cards. So they have four cards, we have six. So we're doing good there. We know one of theirs is the invoke card. You're at two. Uh, question is, do you think Veil Temple might get nerfed? And there's there's always a chance it might. I wouldn't. I'm not expecting it to get nerfed. I don't think that it will. But there's there's always a chance. We'll 
but I would, I would be surprised if it did. I want to sentry flock this Silver Sister, but then I don't have that for an Aphelios. And I definitely want to have removal still for Aphelios. Alright, alright, I can't do it. No, I, I can do it. So by playing a spell, this this does turn into a 5-2 immediately, and so they just have to have anything else to protect it. Which a Pale Cascade does very efficiently. That's 4 for Gangplank. I want to get this Gangplank to be 5 before attacking with it. Like before playing it to attack. Okay, well, that's the way. So that means I only have one other spell in my deck for Sprayfin to grab. Just one Ravenous Flock is my last spell in my deck. What kind of removal are they going to have? Like, are they just like holding up Thermogenic Beam? Maybe? gonna hush gangplank or the pill cascade and guiding touch were both awesome because they both inter you know they both traded with death's hand and drew them cards so that's that's like a you know way that they've kept the card advantage coming there's nothing wrong with rummage there's nothing wrong with pick a card Those cards aren't the problem. The pro problem is Twisted Fate, Aphelios, those, those cards. Rummage has been perfectly fine for a super long time. Um, do I want a Demolitionist right now? No. I'm waiting, waiting to get this powder keg for the demolitionist to, you know, do the extra damage to them, and and I don't have to deal damage to the king plank. Honestly, you probably don't have to nerf Twisted Fate. Really, Aphelios and Burblefish. Yeah, Burblefish needs to be nerfed. Aphelios, Burblefish, those need to be nerfed. Twisted Fate's actually is probably okay. It's it's definitely one of the best champions. But, you know, champions are supposed to be real good. That's probably fine. Okay, so I'm playing Sprayfin here to make sure to grab... Keep up, keep up. I want to grab that Ravenous Flock from my deck because it's the last card, right? So, like, I don't want to naturally draw Ravenous Flock and then my Sprayfin doesn't grab anything anymore. Remember the objectives. A few for the men. Interesting. Let's go. So what what to do with Burblefish? You say maybe a 2-1 instead of a 3-1? No, I think with Burblefish, it's... Um, I mean, I think the problem with Burblefish is making it cost zero mana. That's never... That's not okay making it cost zero mana. I think two things... My, my two recommendations for the card... 
are one of the following. Either A, you can make it, instead of six mana, make it cost ten mana like all the other, all the other, like there's like three other regions that have ten mana cards that have cost reduction. I think Wiggly Burblefish could also just be, like it's on the same power level as those others, so it could just also be um, ten mana as well. Even though it has a lot smaller body, it also creates a card and it has a very easy clause to reduce the cost and it also has elusive which is the most powerful keyword so i think it'd be on on power level with like your skull guys and stuff like that i think so i think 10 mana is perfectly fine uh, the other thing is um that's one thing or what i think it could be a just a different design that could be kind of cool because basically with it they want to have you know it's supposed to be like an elusive um that's an impactful elusive and can be cheap but not something you play like immediately in the game, right? So it's it's kind of hard to to design that kind of card. So my my thinking here with what they have, or just like how they have this card designed, maybe something like, um, it just costs three mana, and it does the same thing, be a three one elusive that creates a card, and it costs, uh, but it costs three mana, but it also says on it instead of the cost reduction thing, it says. Um, that it can't be played unless you have cast three plus spells this game. And so if you do that, then you have, um, I guess I just kind of want a gold card here, but I mean, maybe I should just be, yeah, I should just be blue carding. So if you do that, then... And then it still kind of accomplishes what the card tries tries to do with how it is right now with the six mana and reduce the cost, but it just it has like the synergy with all the threes. It costs three mana. You have to play three spells to cast it, and then you get a, a three mana three one elusive. That could be kind of cool. I mean, blue card's the best decision. Like, do you want me to... Like, red card, I don't get to cast my Decimate right now. And red card doesn't really do anything. I could... Ugh. Well, that's bad for me. That's really bad for me. Oh, if they have, if they just kill me here, I I should have blocked with something else. Also, that can be really bad for me. Okay, that's better for me. So they have to have like so they have two cards, and so they have to have Mystic Shot and get excited, or you know an aftershock. Um, yeah. I'm going to force them to have those. Look to the sky. Do they? I guess they have them. Yeah, so they had Aftershock and then Mystic Shot. Okay, well, I my lines here open myself up to these different direct damage sources. No, it's it's probably game. I like I, I would assume that that's a, a mystic shot. I mean, it's it's game one way or the other, right? Yeah, so they they just had aftershock, aftershock. So my big mistake was not not blocking that traveler for how I was playing this. That was definitely winnable by me. Yeah, I I should have definitely blocked. I I thought I was safe at eight, but obviously I wasn't. The deck was stacked against us. Not really. <laughs> the deck wasn't really stacked against us. I had all the cards to win. And I did not. That's what makes this game great, right? Like, this is a, you know, you still make mistakes and everything. Like, this is a great game. Mm. 
Yeah, that's exactly. I, I was, that's, see, that's the card that I was really more concerned about whenever, for the decisions I was making, I was thinking star shaping, right? Like that's that's what usually what they have. I was thinking guiding touch star shaping and I wanted to do the most amount. You know, like I wasn't trying to just do five damage because of guiding touch and star shaping. You see those two cards a ton in Ophelios decks. And so I was trying to get more damage across than just than that. And so that's that's what I was really concerned with is, is those cards. Um, and yeah, they just had Aftershock, Aftershock, Mystic Shot. And so I, I should have protected my life total a little bit. Yeah, so the biggest problem was not blocking the 4-5 and going down to 8. Yes, that was... But that's why we keep playing, so we keep learning. You know, that's that's something that now, you know, going, going forward, I'll, you know, gotta have that in your mind, and, um, you know, you just keep improving. That's odd. Why would you get the powder keg here? Why why'd they get powder keg? Slow down, will you? That's odd. I'm always up for a round or two. Something for all of you. Yeah, Nashor, we can do that. Gotta go with the flow. Flock. So Flock's good that protects me kind of from sharp sight. If they sharp sight like this 2-1 and block my elusive or block twisted fate, we can ravenous flock it. Let's get it, crew. Could be like repost maybe? Yeah, sharp sight. Good job, Sprayfin. You drew the correct card there with the Ravenous Flock. No, I would not. I would not nerf a Territive Improvement and make that cost three to hurt Purple Fish. No. I think a Terrative Improvement is a fun card to play. I don't think, like, just a, it's, that's just a, it's a well-designed card. I don't think that that card needs to be nerfed. I think Purple Fish is a, like, Purple Fish is not a fun card to play. It's not a card that, that brings enjoyable games or a Terrative Improvement can. Um, no, just stop, stop having a zero mana 3-1 elusive. That's why they nerfed Timer Dinger to, to stop having the 3-1 elusives that were free. Just nerf Purple Fish. Burble fish is adorable and it's fun to say, but it doesn't. It produces really feels bad games when your when your opponent just you know goes like burble fish, burble fish, iterative improvement, iterative improvement. Here's four burble fishes, and now you know you're dead because you're taking twelve elusive damage because all those things cost zero. Um. Still hard Captain Farron. Let's do this. Is this just a bad attack? Obviously I can stun, right? Like so that's that's a thing. Like I can stun this and then attack. Yeah, that's that's gotta be the play. That's it's probably too cute me waiting for them to like relentless pursuit and then stun right, like that's probably just too cute. I should We're just stun. I should just be stunning and attacking. Oh, 
one. Yet another opponent at one life. Can we finish them out? Yeah, we'll stun Quinn. Not allow Quinn to have its attack ability. That can't be right. Yeah, let's let's hope our opponents have six mystic shots. Yeah, I know, right? <clears throat> they just go like thermogenic beam the Nexus. Top deck. Stars uh star shaping that's damaged. That's damage base and you know that Nexus that's Nexus damage. Like, they don't have any, any healing, right? If I just go in and just attack immediately... Yeah. Alright. Two and two. Could have been three and one. If you're newer, this is what I do every day. Play four decks, play five games with each. I like to play a lot of unique decks here on the channel, and then the replays go up to YouTube. So we got Twisted Fate Fizz. We were just talking about old Burblefish. Looks like we got some Burblefish going on here. Send those all back. Yuck. Where's our one drops? Where's our two drops? Yeah, we have played almost almost all the champion combinations, probably. Just the other day, yeah, just the other day we had like the Shivana Sejuani. That was kind of cool. Oh boy, here I go. Once I stamp papers, now faces. Well, that's a good hand for them. They're only one drop, and they're only two drop. <laughs> You're waiting for that Lulu Nautilus deck? Yeah, we're talking about, like, the, the uh, worst com champion combinations... And that was that was one Lulu Nautilus. <laughs> we need some deep support here. All right, come on, opponent. There we go. Join me if you want to live. Inferior design. Like Ballist Ballistic Bot says inferior design to my Demolitionist that was just also a 2-3. Like, they're, you're the exact same design. You're both 2-3s. Inferior design. So if we do find Ravenous Flock, this... Ballistic Ball would have damage on it for Ravenous Flock. Oh, wow. That seems like the card that I always get wrecked by in this deck is Suit Up. I always get wrecked by Suit Up. Yeah, that was...
was rough. Okay, so I think I'm going to double spell with Grenadier and Arachnoid Sentry. I think that kind of puts the most pressure on them. Um, not sure what we're going to stun yet with Arachnoid Sentry. We'll see. All right, we figured it out. You know, I don't. I don't want to let them just block with that two one. I want them to block with Ballistic Bot and Fizz <clears throat> and those kind of cards. Hey, Dr hey, Draken. So the Ballistic Bot has a free block on either my 2-1 or my 2-2. Okay. And then I was gonna say, I was gonna finish up by saying the Fizz has a free block on any of the three power on either of the three powers. But we don't need to like keep each individual unit in play whenever they're going to be winning with elusives anyway. And although we do not have another Twisted Fate in hand, I would like, like, we're not, we, we're not going to level up Twisted Fate, but I would like to, if we draw another Twisted Fate, to be able to play it and play red card or gold card or something. Deal me in. Blue as the Serpentine. So I'm casting the Death Sand this turn. So that's that leaves me with four mana. And so that could be salvage, but I think I'm just gonna play the Crackshot Corsair. Yeah, I'll be Death Sanding like a burble fish. Most likely, but maybe a twisted fate. Stack in the eye. Okay, so we can get... How greedy do we want to get? I can try to kill this Fizz right now, but if they have a zero mana spell, then obviously we're in a terrible position. Or I just kill the Twisted Fate and let them have the Fizz. The reason to make this, this block here is because these things block my one power, but they don't block the two power. How greedy do we want to get? Do do they have Poro Cannon? We've seen one Poro Cannon from them so far. Those decks usually play like three Poro Cannons, right? Death's Hand and Spray Fins gone. I rarely forget and never forgive. Anything else? <laughs> Victory at any cost. So I think they got rid of one of their fleeting cards. Or no, they never mind, they got rid of Chum of the Water, so they still have three fleeting cards. Ouch. That hurts. But that's five direct damage that would not have gone towards got rid of a rummage. So it looks like maybe they looks like maybe my death hand could have killed the fizz. There's only one card 
I think just like this one card over here. Oh man, and then a parlay? Gross, because now they can just open attack. There's only one card that we don't know about. That went really well for them. Come on, Death Hand. Lock. Well, I might as well try. Yeah, might as well try. So I needed to Death Hand the Fizz before. That was the... Yeah, they just they drew real well. Yep, need to go for the Fizz. That was a tough decision whether to kill the, try to kill the Fizz or the Twisted Fate. And it looks like from everything that we saw from their hand, it would have been able to kill the Fizz. So that was that was the thing there. I thought my Gangplank was going to be good, but you know, get excited, Mystic Shot. Man, this game is <laughs> this game's difficult. I definitely feel like I had the cards to win. Hindsight hindsight is you know so twenty twenty right. So much easier with hindsight. Um, I was just going to be in a really tough spot if I did try to death sand, and then they would have played a Poro Cannon. I would have been in a really, really rough spot. And so I thought I could still win by just simply killing the Twisted Fate. So another another two three here, where I think I there's the one game where I definitely could have won. You know, if I just would have made the block, we would have won. And then that that game, I really feel like I should have probably won too. So you know, maybe just some a couple of different decisions here and there could have been a four one. You know, a block. You know, kill the kill the fizz, block the four five, boom, get two wins. Um, deck still really good, but again, that's why you can't just you can't just like watch these videos and look at. I mean, I kind of said this last time. You can't just watch these videos and look at just look at the record and say, okay, two three, that deck's not as good, because um, you know, just two different decisions there, and we're four, you know we're four and one. Um, there is some some pilot error sometimes, but. Uh, it's it's all about hindsight, <laughs> you know. It's I made decisions that I thought were the best at the time, but they ended up not being. But another good strong deck here with Gangplank's Fate. All right, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I would appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.